Racism was a really hot topic even during the 70s. And it was at this time when actress Gloria Hendry played the love interest of Roger Moore in the James Bond movie Live and Let Die. But because of being dark skin, many people started hating on her for the interracial relationship she portrayed in the film. Continue watching to discover what she had to go through just for being seen getting romantically involved with a white man. Who is Gloria Hendry? Born in Florida, Gloria Hendry was the eldest of two girls in her family, but she isn't exactly from America. Hendry comes from a family with a mixed racial background, primarily from Indian, African, Irish, and Chinese heritage. She literally had all races running through her blood, but her most noticeable feature was her darker skin tone, which at that time wasn't really congratulated. If she would have been a modern-day actress, she would definitely be considered a true American, because in the end, America is nothing more than just a melting pot of all races. Anyway, Hendry didn't live long in Florida. When she was young, her mother decided to be closer to her grandparents in Jersey City, New Jersey. The soon-to-be actress eventually attended school and was an excellent student with dreams and a passion for art and music. She was mostly focused on learning the violin, and once she got good at it, she joined the All-City Orchestra, performed for radio, and various academic events. When she reached the end of her high school education, Hendry got educational training to become a secretary. During this time, she learned various clerical skills and fast typing, but she decided that this wasn't exactly how she wanted to close her life and attended Essex College of Business for Law for a legal secretary position to become a professional at what she wanted to pursue. Defying all odds, becoming the Bond girl. When Hendry was given a shot at film, she discovered she was a complete natural at acting. Eventually, she became cast at one of the biggest films at the time, James Bond. In the film, she had to portray a woman that gets romantically involved with a man. But there was one major problem. The man was white, and Hendry was a darker shade. And if you didn't already know, interracial relationships back in the day were highly frowned upon. No one really knew how the audience would respond to this new relationship standard, but the creators of the film decided to give it a shot anyway. Hendry remembers getting ready for shooting and Canadian film producer Harry Saltzman seriously talking to her about racism. She revealed that he told her it was really shameful that racism was still a big thing in America. Harry Saltzman even introduced Hendry to a white man that he thought she would get along with. She believed this was the perfect timing for her to start a relationship herself, so she accepted and started dating the guy. But soon after the pair got to know each other a little bit better, the man, who Hendry never mentions, started becoming controlling, telling her how to act in public and how to dress. It was at this point when Hendry lost interest in the relationship and just left him behind. Hendry's Experience with Negative Comments Since racism levels were still high in America during the 70s, the production of the Bond movie Live and Let Die were really taking a risk with the interracial thing they were about to introduce the world to. This meant they had to be really careful on what to show the public or not. For instance, Hendry revealed that a scene where she was kissing Roger in the film was later cut off because producers were just too afraid that it might receive too much backlash from the general public. Hendry was also faced with a really painful situation, and that was when she spotted that her photo and name were splattered in black ink on various newspapers around the world. There were even cases where she would be the only actress not mentioned in the film on billboards and magazines. However, Hendry still gained a massive reputation from appearing in the film, and so she thought that people would now recognize her from this role forever. But soon, the actress was invited to work with different endorsements. After being associated in advertising all over the world and going from one publicity event to another for many years, she saw that her image wasn't really related to the character she played in Live and Let Die anymore. At that time, she never knew whether that was a bad thing or if this happened to all Bond girls after some time passed upon the release of the Bond film. 
Did Hendry ever date Roger Moore? Throughout the filming of Live and Let Die, Roger Moore and Harry Saltzman were really kind to Hendry. Even when they had to stay in Ocho Rios, Jamaica at the San Susi Hotel, Hendry's room was between Roger and his family and Harry and his family for them to be near her at all times in case something happened. But since Hendry loved the nightlife and was finally in Jamaica with people that would not judge her on her appearance, she revealed that she would sneak out each night without Roger Moore and Harry Saltzman knowing. It was during this time that she met a great Jamaican man with whom she would instantly fall in love. As for Roger, Hendry always denied being something more with him rather than co-workers and good friends. They were really close and would usually drive along together on set with Roger's limousine. He was also the first person to encourage her to write her first autograph to a fan. She was treated as the most privileged actress on set. When being interviewed, Hendry was asked if rumors were true that she was treated more subtly in comparison with other actresses on set. They were so kind to her, she felt like she was the lead actor in Live and Let Die. Hendry only saw the film once in public in 1973 in New York on the day of its premiere. She attended the event in a VIP large black limousine Cadillac. All the attention was on her, and she revealed she had no idea how to react to this event because she was so nervous from never having experienced such a thing in her life. Hundreds of people were shouting her name and asking for her autograph. Flashy lights and cameras were all up in her face. At that moment, Hendry revealed that she felt like she was somebody really special. Photos of her and her name appeared in various newspapers and magazines with positive comments, and for a number of years after that, people called upon her and made her feel really special. She was also offered appearances and to give her endorsements for various causes. Hendry literally felt like she was living inside the movie at that point. Even on set, she was treated with a lot of privileges. She had her own chair, dressing area, shared a limousine with Roger, and even had personal publicity shots. Her experience working with Guy Hamilton. Hendry loved working with Hamilton as well. She revealed that he never got upset with her and took his time to reshoot scenes. Even if the scene was not working well, he would take Hendry aside and have a conversation with her and how she could better her performance. After that, things would just return back to normal and he would continue shooting with her. Have you seen any other movies of Gloria Hendry? If so, which ones? Let us know in the comments and check out the next video in this series.